Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Big East Rewind. I'm Chuck Everson, your seven-foot host from Villanova University, and my partner straight off some time in the, in the tropics, <laughs> just straight back from vacation, right off the plane, the sensational Sonny Sparrow. How are you, Sonny? I'm good, Chuck. Like you they say, right off the couch, right now, go, my friend. Right off the couch. <laughs> right off the couch. You, you didn't even give me a chance to uh, unpack. You're right here. Here we are. Right from the beach. Nice. Right into your living rooms. So nice, now, nice okay. tan, Sonny. There Thank you. Go. you. Thank See, you. Sonny's got you know, he's got it going on. That's good. So today, Sonny, we have a, a really uh, good show. Um, we've been trying to get these guys again. These guards, you know, and well, one's a big and one's a guard, but the, right. you know, the guard in particular that's going to be on, we've been trying to get him for a long time and we finally got to him. And uh, the same with uh, our other friend that's with us too. We've been trying to get the guys from Seton Hall for a long time. Guards are a little quicker, uh, Chuck, a little more elusive. Man, I tell I you what, it, help you there, I man. should get, I should get an A for, for, for persistence, son. You no, know? <laughs> I mean. I mean, you know, there's a fine line between being a pest to somebody and being persistent, you know, so <laughs> I try not to be a pest because, uh, you know, nobody wants to be that. But in any case, uh, you know, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce our crew for today. Our first guest was the 15th pick by the Atlanta Hawks in the 1991 NBA draft. The great pirate legend played in the uh, final game in 1989 played in the Elite Eight, played you know all over the place, played in the pros, had a good pro career. The pirate legend, Anthony Avent. How are you, Ant? Hey, man, I'm doing great, Chuck. What's up, Murdoch? Thanks for having me. Yep, absolutely. Up? And you know he's a legend, Sonny, when he has his own picture as his background. <laughs> you know, know, it's legendary. You know, I, know, that's, just, I have to yeah. say that right oh. off the bat, Sonny. For those at home that are listening, Anthony's got we're talking to Anthony and right behind Anthony is another picture of Anthony. So yes, we are right. among greatness, Chuck. Let, let, oh, let, that's me, awesome. let, let me get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and our other guest uh, was the 21st pick also of the 91 draft by the Utah Jazz. Providence College Hall of Famer. He was an All-American at Providence from Friartown by way of Bridgewater, New Jersey. Briar legend, Eric Murdoch. How are you, Eric? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, great to be here. And, um, you know, Aven with the picture as yeah, the backdrop, you know, the start of all of this flamboyancy started in high school when he came to the state championship game in a three-quarter length mink coat. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Three-quarter length mink. That's my man, Avid. Always styling, always styling. Straight out of Brick City, love him. Do hey, we want to? Do we want to hey, jump yo, right Chuck. into how the hey, game yo, went? Or no? Hey, yo, Chuck Murdoch was starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> said, calm, down, calm down, Murdoch. It's just me. That's Ingram. great. We just together this summer, man. I got you, man. You know I love oh, you, good brother. <laughs> that's hilarious. So let me ask you this: as a big guy myself, man. Where are you getting fur coats to fit you at six <laughs> nine? Well, well, you got to. No, see that's Chuck. not I'm something from... you can go and get it off the rack. So, yeah. so check it out, Chuck. I'm from North New Jersey. I know. So okay. North is known was fashion. So it was no problem understanding fashion, where to go. It was it was all there. It wasn't hard okay. to do. When you're in a big city, you can find anything. Oh, I, and, I and I'm and I'm 15, 20 minutes from New York City. Okay. So right. you know. That's oh, the they definitely have some big and tall stuff there in New York City for sure. There's well, no my, my point is, usually in high school, you know, you can't afford a mink coat, first of all. And then he had the gator shoes to go with it. So I'm like, where's Avery well, getting all this money? Well, I, I, I'm sure PJ there. took you guys when you played <laughs> down south to Freedman's, right? No, they, they, were actually, they were snake skins. Oh, and we had snake. a big and tall on Broad Street that sold <laughs> gators and snake skins. <laughs> I couldn't afford the gators, but I was rocking snake skins. <laughs> <laughs> snake skins alligators and if you're lucky you can get to the ostrich yeah, well yeah and that, I, I know when you guys played in the league i I know you guys have been down to freedman's right freedman's point. yeah of course they, yeah, Freedman, definitely you i think, every, I think everybody play. who graced the nba court was a, oh my has God. been the freedman's yeah. coach mass took us down there a couple times and 
you walk in and you think you're walking into like little sisters of the poor when you walk in the place. But as you go up to the fifth floor, yeah. do you want a pair of purple ostrich They bring you upstairs, yeah. And at size 20, it's on the rack. You can just go grab them. You know? Yo, that's crazy, Chuck, because I have some purple gators. There you go. <laughs> see? See? There you go. What yep. size? At the time, it was um 14s. But my feet grew to like 15, 16. I was pissed because I couldn't wear them. I had to just give them away. Yeah. Well, that's what happens as you get older. I, I was I was a 16, I was, now I'm a 17. Was. So I get it, you know? Yeah. Not easy, not easy, my man. That's for sure. Not easy, man. So as you can tell, Sonny, these guys go way back. You can yeah. see, you know, from the camaraderie, just in a few minutes, we've been talking to both of them. These guys go back to high school, you know. And yeah, I was uh, I was kind of curious when uh, when Eric brought up the uh, state championship game. I I don't know if we were going to go through the stat line in that game or no. I mean, <laughs> well. We, you know, I, listen. I wasn't sure where we're going with that. I'm sure Avon would like to gloss over that point, but you know, it's <laughs> actually, 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 I wouldn't because I can't gloss over that if I'm going to talk about Seton Hall versus Providence. So I can't <laughs> have it both ways. So I won't do that. Okay, but, but fair enough. Is, fair enough, Anthony. But the, but the truth is, before we played that high school state game, I met Eric Murdoch while in high school. We both joined the North Kauai Rams. Right. And we, that's how we met each other for the first time. He came and joined the Rams. I was playing with another program, but we had nothing going on. And I was in summer school. And they said, yo, do you want to come to Arizona for this big tournament? I was like, can you get me out of summer school? They said, yes, got me out of summer school. I ended up in Arizona playing with the guys. And then Murdoch showed up. And I was like, who is this guy? Because I knew everyone else. I knew everyone else because they were majority from my area, Essex yeah. County, Jersey City. So I knew all the guys. But Murdoch, I didn't know. So it was good. It was good to get to know him during that brief moment um, leading up to plan for the state championship the following year. Yeah. And uh, to piggyback off of that, um, joining that team, um, <clears throat> I was notified by Dave Miller and Lance Miller's father. Uh, he saw a little article in the Star Ledger about tryouts for AAU team. Mm -hmm. We knew nothing about AAU. And um, we go out to Newark for the first time at the YMC, small YMCA. And I walk into the gym and I'm <laughs> seeing the greatest athletes I've ever seen in my life. I'm in awe. I see... Who's who in New Corey Jersey? Floyd, I see Avon, I see all these guys running up and down. I'm like, holy crap. Like, it was just eye-opening experience. And uh, just looking back on my career, I, th I thought I was really good, you know, living in Bridgewater, which is, you know, the suburbs of, of Jersey. But when I went out there, it opened my eyes to say, I really got to pick up my game because there's some serious, serious ballers out here. And um, somehow, some way, I made that team. Mm. Back then, Chuck, if you remember, there was probably two or three A teams in this yeah. whole state. Four Only teams. two for us, Murdoch. So to make one of those teams, you had to be the best of the best. And fortunately, I made that team and uh, I remember that Arizona trip. It was the BCI tournament at Arizona State. And uh, we we walk into the gym and every coach in America was in the stands. We're looking up at Thompson and Bayheim and, and Raleigh and all these Big East coaches and coaches from, you know, the West Coast. And we're like, holy crap. Like we knew we made it at this time. And we actually played really well. And uh, I think that's where I got noticed by Providence. And uh, from then on, they recruited me. But, um, you know, that experience, that Nork Y, uh, getting to know that street basketball and 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 me having to raise my game really uh, propelled my career. Murdoch, you probably don't know, our first loss in that tournament was to Larry Johnson's team. Was it Larry Johnson? I remember yep. Houston yeah, had some big Texas. boys. But yeah, uh, we had lost. We actually was playing Dallas that game. We lost. Oh yeah, the Texas team. 
Yes, that yeah. was Larry Johnson. Yeah. Um, but I, I was a little more prepared because I went to the North Hawaii um, my freshman year. And when I walked in the North Hawaii, it was Mark Bryan in there. It was Tim Perry. It was David oh, yeah. Rivers. It was Kenny, Kenny, um, Kenny Anderson who went to Villanova. It, it was so Kenny much Wilson, talent. Yeah. Kenny Wilson, my bad. Kenny, Kenny Wilson. Wilson, yeah, Kenny Wilson. It was so much talent in that gym. Um, Chris Gatlin. I mean, yeah. it was it was it, it wasn't just Franz Bozzi. It was everybody under them. Allah Abdunabi. Yep. That was the next. We were all in the same gym. So you had David Rivers. They were the seniors practicing. We were waiting for them to finish because then the juniors, Allah and those guys would practice. And underneath them was Chris Gatlin. Right. And underneath Chris Gatlin was my group. So it was just so much talent. In the gym. So who were some of the guys that played on your team, guys? You know, who were some of the guys that, that were on your AAU team? So, with you? um, so, so I was with the North Y Rams. The head assistant coach for the North Y Rams, he separated from the North Y Rams going into towards the end of my junior year. He separated from the Rams Prior to that, my team was myself, um, Bobby Hurley, Jerry Walker, yeah, um, wow. Chris Gent. We were all on the same team, Franz Volsi, Ala Abdunabi. But when he separated and created the Roadrunners, that's when Chris Gent, Ala, Franz, Corey Floyd, Sean Worthy, um, um, Bobby Hurley, Jerry Walker, Luther Wright, all yeah, of those Luther. guys moved over with Sandy to yeah, the yeah. North Watt, to the um, road runners. Because Sandy was a skill developer. So you knew Sandy was going to have the gym open, helping you develop your skills versus the North Watt Ram was more so here's a great opportunity um, right. to play and showcase your skills. Sandy was more, hey, let me pick you up six, seven days a week and really work with you and show you the skills. So a lot of guys gravitated towards Sandy. Some stayed with the road, with the uh, North Bay Rams. They both were great programs. Couldn't go wrong either way. Yeah. Well, we mentioned it briefly at the beginning. So now talk about that championship game, you know. And if you want, and you can bring up Eric's missed dunk. We won't, we won't uh, fault <laughs> you for that, you know. So talk about that championship game, the state championship game, Shabazz against uh, Bridgewater. So that that championship game, obviously, when you look back on it, you had um, you have four Big East players on the court, but while the game is going on, you don't you don't look at it that way at the time. Of course, you don't realize when you look back on the game, um, you had two former professional NBA players on the same court. So you factor that in, and you go by, wow, this just two happened. first rounders. This was some some hell of a talent yeah, that was on that court during that game. And um, the biggest thing I took away from that game was I learned from that, from that point on, I learned if you wanted to really win on the high school and college level, you I don't care how good you are, you're not going to do it if you don't have a really good, solid guard play. Guard, the way the, way the game is played, um, the way you could zone up, bigs, um, yeah. put one in front, one in the back, all these things you can do to yeah. isolate a big. Yeah. You have to have really good guard play to make teams pay. And at that time, Murdoch being a senior on top of his game and, and the way Lance and Dave being juniors and the way they could stroke it, um, they, they won that game just off of the fact that it was going to be a guards game at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, go ahead, go ahead, D. Yeah, um, like I said, the atmosphere was unbelievable. Uh, so many Shabazz fans, so many Bridgewater fans, and so many just casual fans mm -hmm. uh, invaded the rack. Um, you know, it's one of those high school games that's just going to go down in history. And um, you know, as Avon was saying, um, you know, it's about guard play, but it's also about a game plan. Um, Avon was so dominant in high school. Uh, we said we knew we had to give up something, and it wasn't going to be Avon. So Avon had two or three guys around him, you know, every time down the floor. 
and towards the you know late part of the game, it was tough for them to get him the ball. So, like I said, we had to give up some. So Reggie Collins, who's a great player in himself, played for Shabazz. I think he had like 28 points uh, that game, hit a lot of big shots. But, um, you know, we said if we were going to lose by Reggie, you know, scoring from the outside, you know, God bless him, we'll tip our cat. But, you know, that was the game plan um, going in. Um, but, you know, our team from Bridgewater, we had some guys that just wasn't scared. I mean, we beat uh, Camden Wilson that year. Mm. down in Cherry Hill. Wow. And Camden Wilson was better than Camden back in the day. You remember those powerhouse teams that Camden had? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. They were better than Camden that year, and we beat them down there. And so we were battle-tested. And You so, guys beat Linden, right? Uh, no, we beat Stop Ewing them. with uh, Savage. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, Tom Savage. Tom Rutgers. Savage, Kelly Williams. They had a, they yeah. had a crew. So uh, it, it was just one of those uh, Hoosier stories, to be honest with you, that um, you know, we had the crowd behind us, the following, wherever we go, we, you know, we bring, you know, 500 fans, you know, to the, to these games. And, um, like I said, it was a classic game. Uh, I'll never, um, forget it. Uh, I'll never let Avent forget it. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he stole, he stole my, my tape, you know, when we was in Milwaukee because I was showing too many of our teammates and he got frustrated. And so, uh, you know, here we are. So we you know, guys are, that's got to so, be a so lot of. I didn't. Ahead, I didn't Jimmy, steal this tape. <laughs> what did you say? Steal the tape. What did you he took it? Me, he let me borrow the tape to watch the game, <laughs> and by accident, I mean it was purely accident. <laughs> we had a game um, that night in Milwaukee, and it was one of the big music award shows coming on, and I wanted to see it, but I didn't realize I had that tape in there to record the music awards show. Oh. So oh, it's it a recorded that. over the game, <laughs> or, or the music awards. Where's the violin? Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> that is exactly what happened. That is so you truth. taped over the, the state truth. championship so game. God, yeah, but if you want to see the American Music Awards, Eric, from back but then, you back can see day, it. You know, Michael Jackson you was performing. You had Michael Jackson performing, all these great performers. And I didn't realize that tape was the tape that was in there to record the music awards and it recorded over the game. So you uh, failed to look at the tape before you recorded over it. That's what you're saying? Murdoch, what I'm saying is, Murdoch, you and I both know you're always running late to get out the house and you got to be in that gym by a certain hour. Dunleavy, everybody looking at you crazy if you walk in that locker room late. Hey, Chuck, Raleigh so Massimino wouldn't have went for these freaking excuses right here, man. No, but you know, you know what? what? This, this, this seems like truth. it's breaking news, it's though, guys. Truth. I mean, this is a first. We're, we're reporting this first. It's the truth. It's the truth, though, Chuck. It's not It's not that. But, to be, but Murda, I don't know if you recall, back in high school, I don't know how it works with you guys, Chuck, but in New Jersey, um, the biggest and the best teams are normally group four. Group yep. four means you have the largest population in the biggest schools. Yep. So we were group three. So that was one of the first times a group three school championship was going to be like the biggest championship and not a group four school. Right. So that, that there in itself, um, being from where I was from, I always paid attention to that. Um, the group four, group three, group three, group two, group one schools. Um, so that was, you know, that was that was awesome. So, so Eric, it was your fault that you didn't take that little plastic tab off the VHS. That, that's what it boils down to. This whole thing comes down to that little tab. Mm. That's, that's what it sounds like, man. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I forgot about that, Sonny. You're right. Wow. So, it so is. guys, so now, how cool is it? You know, we're going to jump around a little bit. I got. Know. Can I ask one question though? Yeah. Go ahead. We leave that. So you guys are teammates on the AAU team. A A A Anthony, you're going, you know, Seton Hall is where you end up. Eric, you end up at Providence. Was there any discussion like, hey, why don't we keep this thing together? Like any, like, you know, kind of like the big three joining. Like, did you guys talk about let's go to school together at all? We didn't. And I believe if we had the, if we had social media the way we do today. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the ability to communicate, uh, smartphones, all of that. Um, whether we ended up together is one thing, but that discussion would have definitely happened. Right. But would if that would have happened, 
I would have had to go to Seton Hall because this guy was not going out of Jersey nowhere. He wanted to be close to home. No, 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 no. He's he's wrong. Avin, I would have had to go to Seton Hall. Murdoch, I was. He going, wasn't coming to Providence. But but Murdoch, neither one of us would have probably ended up at Seton Hall or Providence because I was looking first to go to North Carolina State. That's the only school I took an official visit to other than Seton Hall. Oh, wow. I was in love with Roley Massimino in North Carolina State. So I was well, headed to North Carolina State. You could be State. in love with Massimino, but you mean Jimmy Valvano. I'm sorry, you I'm sorry. Italian it was, it was, stuff, man. <laughs> hey, man. We all sound right. alike. It's okay. No, no, no. You're absolutely <laughs> right. It's Jimmy V. I, I mixed up Roley because I took my unofficial visit to Villanova. Villanova was number two on my list. When did you visit Nova? I visit Nova in the summer. My high school coach drove me down to Villanova as an unofficial visit. In, in 90, 90, 91? This was, nine, this was the summer of 1986. Oh, really? Because I came out of high school in 87. Okay. So this was 86. And I knew I knew enough about Roley being a Jersey guy. Yep. So um, that was the visit I took in the summer, and I took my official visit to North Carolina State. So Murdoch, we was going to end up at North Carolina State, <laughs> Villanova, and potentially Maryland, because that was the next school on my list. Yeah, well, my schools were, my dream schools were Syracuse and Georgetown. Mm. And um, neither one of them recruited me. Uh, I actually went up to Syracuse camp and um, played, I think I was the MVP up there. I mean, it was a lot of kids, obviously those camps, you're not having the greatest players there, but it was a lot of great players there. And I was the MVP and still didn't get a, a sniff from Syracuse. Wow. And, um, you know, Bernie Fine was there. And, um, you know, after we played them, you know, at, you know, you're doing the handshake after the games, Bernie would whisper in my ear, like, I made a mistake. I made a mistake and apologize. But uh, it was Syracuse and, and Georgetown. Um, but with that said, I definitely wanted to play in the Big East from back in the day, watching those those uh, big Monday games, you know, Syracuse, Georgetown, Georgetown, St. John's. I just wanted to be a part of it. And to be honest with you, Providence was the biggest school that recruited me. And really? um, my coach said, you know what? You're going to Providence. You know, it's a small school. You're going to get to know your professors. It's the only show in town. Um you know, Rick Pitino was the was the coach at the time, and uh, he came to my school, and I was kind of undecided, and uh, this is how Rick Pitino laid it out to me. He was like, if you don't sign now, I'm just going to go recruit these other guys. And that's when I signed. I signed my letter of early, you know, intent, and, uh, you know, the record. So he threatened you. Yeah, he 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 scared he scared the crap out of me, man. Because I was like, you know, I can't I can't lose this one. This is the biggest one I got. So before I even played my basketball season, I I was signed to Providence. Murdoch, but, when I think about it, you were really perfectly talented for Georgetown. The yeah. way you play defense, just think about the stills. Yeah, well, you, we played the same style. They press, but, we press. But we know what Georgetown was known for. Oh man! Oh yeah! You would have fit it perfect with John Thompson style. Those people. Nike shoes with the Hoyas on the back, I was sold, brother. Yeah. Wait, we get we gotta talk about the shoes. No, oh, the shoes. You guys had Converse. <laughs> Yo, those were the heaviest well, Converse, shoes. Murdoch? Those were the heaviest shoes in America. Right? Oh my God, they were the worst shoes ever. <laughs> Ever, wow. <laughs> and it was heavy. It was like saw... Magic Johnson shoes. I, we couldn't move in them, but I guess that uh... was the contract that we had. I mean, you know, back in the day, man. You know, obviously, it's not how it is now. I mean, we we struggled as a as a college institution back there as far as finances and stuff. We wasn't getting the great stuff. We you had know, looking at Syracuse. They was up there, you know, driving in blazers and getting paid and all of this stuff and. We wasn't getting nothing and and running through brick walls for these coaches. So we you were the weapons. Always some envy, you know, to those programs. The Converse weapon. Those were the Magic Johnson and Larry Bird shoes. <laughs> yeah, wow. man. So, yeah. so Eric, you get recruited by Rick, and then what happened then? Because you played three years for Rick Barnes, right? Yeah. So I get there, and so you know, you hear the stories about Rick Patino, right? Oh if yeah. Late. 
you're going to do a mile for every minute you're late. So me and Cal Foster is up there in the summertime. And we're staying at the Lynch's house. That's where all those players stayed during you know, the summertime when we couldn't stay on campus. And so we have a, me a meeting, our first meeting with Rick Patino, like 7, 7 a.m. So me and Cal, we wake up at 6.55. We had five minutes to get to this meeting. Meanwhile, it's about a mile to get to where we need to go. So we're just throwing on clothes and we're sprinting across campus, like sprinting. We get there, we're in a sweat, we're huffing and puffing. And Patino's just real calm. He's like real calm. Everybody's meeting. We make it there, you know, at seven o'clock right on the dot. And he says, guys, um, you know, nothing earth shattering. Uh, I have a offer from the New York Knicks. Um, if any of you guys refuse, you know, me going to the Knicks, uh, you know, I'll stay. And so, like, really, I'm just a freshman, you know, coming in. You think I'm going to be like, hey, Rick, man, you recruited me. You got to stay here. And after that meeting, he was gone. Just like wow. that. Gone to the Knicks. And Gordy so Chase coached it the next year. Right. And then Rick Patino, uh, I'm sorry, Rick Barnes right after that. So Chiesa was a little crazy because I remember him <laughs> oh. from basketball camps. Oh, my God. You'd go and, and they'd have speakers, you know. Oh and he God. would always do this defensive thing. And he'd have a, a jar of Noxzema, which I'm not even really sure what that is. <laughs> I think it's you put it on burns or whatever. So if somebody got burnt, he would put the Noxzema on the kid's face and – you know, you got burned, Noxima, Noxima. That's how I remember Gordy. But how was he to play for? Because he seemed like he was uh, feisty like some of the other coaches. Oh, man, you know what? Um, I'll give you the bad first. The bad was, yeah, you're right. Gordy was absolutely nuts uh, yeah. as a coach. Uh, you couldn't never play hard enough. He, meanwhile, we're running through brick walls and doing all these slides and diving on the floor and doing all this. I mean, back in the day, what we did was – it was almost criminal like because there was no time restraints on the court. Like you could be there all day. Chuck, I'm yeah. sure you remember there's times where oh, yeah. you lose to Syracuse or Georgetown, come home or get on campus at 2 a.m. And the coach is like, tape them up. Right. Take right oh. to the gym. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it was with Gordon. We, you know, they just came off the final four, Billy Donovan, Delray Brooks and those guys. Yeah, 87. And so, you know, expectations were high. And he put so much pressure on himself to be like Patino. But Patino would coach you hard. But then at the end of practice, he'll hug you, tell, tell you he loves you, have you over at his house, you know, for dinner and stuff to get to know you, things like that. So just didn't have the personality to um, be like Patino. So he put that pressure on. Then they fired him after... One year. One year, yeah. And mm. it was my, uh, and I admit, it was myself, it was Marty wow. Cullen, it was Paco Screen, Chris Watts, we all, Abdul Shantan. It's all the top guys. It's all the we top went, guys. We went to Marinado, rest in peace, John Marinado, and we said, if he comes back, man, we're not coming back. That's how, mm. that's how brutal it was. Wow. Now, the wow. good part about Gordy is, after that, he was an assistant coach with Utah Jazz. Yeah. And guess who drafted me the next year? The or, same team that drafted me. Yeah. You know, so uh, he and and I was one of the guys he liked. I tried to do whatever he said. I got a lot of playing time my freshman year. Him and Paco Screen, who was the starting point guard, had a falling out. So I got a lot of minutes my freshman year. But I tried to work as hard as I could, you know. And then he was responsible for helping me get to Utah. So Eric, but, you you didn't get caught up in like. Most guys, if you're playing for a guy that recruited you, like Rick, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Rick's not there, and you got Anthony Avent or whoever being your coach, right? Yeah. And now Ant wants to bring his own guys in. You didn't get caught up in that. It didn't seem like because you had a terrific career. You played a lot of minutes. Yeah. Most times, you go, oh, he's not my guy. I got to recruit my guys. My guys are going to play. The other guys don't. Right. How did how did that work out like that for you? Because you're pretty but, fortunate. Because of his freshman year. Well, yeah. it, it was because all of the players actually wanted Gordy to be the coach because Gordy was a great, great assistant coach. And um, they wanted him uh, to take over. And um, he didn't recruit over me. Um, right. 
And so the style of play was exactly the same. We pressed the whole time. You know, we shot threes. You know, Patino was yep. innovator the of the three-point yep. line. Yep. And so we shot threes. We pressed, which was my style of play. So it was an easy transition. I didn't look to go anywhere else. All the other players were, was like, well, they want Gordy. Gordy was the head coach. And I said, fine, I'm, I'm coming. I'm not not transferred, looking somewhere else. Wow. So, so and what was your – how did you – how did you make your way to Seton Hall? What was the what was what put you over the edge? I know they had you played for PJ. Well, right? We've had we've had Coach on the show, and we've had Mark Bryan on, and a couple of the guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I know PJ a long time. You know he was one of the uh, one of the after Raftery he came in and you know did his thing. So he's with the Big East for a long time. Talk about that for a minute. So I'm gonna jump on that and I'm gonna lay that all out. But if Murdoch would have followed my cue and came to Seton Hall. <laughs> he would have, he would, A, he would have won the Big East Championship in senior <laughs> year, like I did. Number two, number two, he would have been there instead of Oliver Tell at the time, because Ali right. was a transfer. Right. And in the way Murdoch scores, he would have been the perfect antidote to Anderson Hunt. Or Greg Anthony with Terry the hair. So we would have matched what UNLV was trying to do in terms of points. Um, but that was that's Murdoch's fault. <laughs> you know, he has to live with that. So now let me move on. David, you was a big man. I didn't, I didn't want to play from the inside out, man. Y'all didn't out. press at Murdoch. all. Y'all didn't but play my style of game. But this is why you never sniffed the final eight or sweet 16. <laughs> because, of that, because of that philosophy, that mindset. You, you see, you know, what's re you know what's really funny about this? this? I'm listening to this banter, okay? And I, obviously, I'm a big guy. Sonny was a guard, okay? And, and we go back and forth with the bigs and guards. So I know exactly what Anthony's talking about, you know, Eric, you know? <laughs> Not that I'm taking sides here, but you know, Anthony out, does man. make a point. That's all I'll say. Come on, man. <laughs> Trust me, if you, you establish the inside presence, you guys are going to eat all day because they're going to load up to stop the Derek Coleman's of the world. And now you Sherman Douglases and all you guys can eat. So like I said, high school and college is a guard game. So come on, Murdoch. Now, the whole thing with Seton Hall, believe it or not, Seton Hall, Seton Hall recruited me, but they didn't really recruit me. Seton Hall, for the most part, did not think they can get me. They knew, they knew my intentions. They knew who was recruiting me. At the time, um, North Carolina State, not too long, just won the national championship. Right. Villanova just won the national championship. You had Maryland right there. So as far as Seton Hall is concerned, they didn't think they can out-recruit those schools. So they didn't pursue me the way one would think. Once the incident happened with Lynn Bias, um, Maryland was out. Um, once I went to North Carolina State, I just knew that was just too far from my parents and, yeah. and close relatives to be able to get to see, the, see a game. I knew Seton Hall was in the Big East, and I always, and I had started trying to figure out why all these great New Jersey players was just bypassing Seton Hall for so long. I don't care if it was Raphael Addison, um, David Rivers, all these guys, other than Mark Bryant, everybody was bypassing um, Seton Hall. I looked at Seton Hall, I said, well, I'm not going to Syracuse. Derek Coleman and guys over there. Not going to Georgetown. Um, I was looking at what teams already had in terms of coming back with juniors and seniors. And I was really looking at my class. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to fight to get on the court. And I may not really get on the court to my junior year with, the, with these guys who are already on that roster ahead of me. And then I looked at Seton Hall and I said, well, Mark Bryan got one year left and he's out. And I kind of looked at everybody else and I said, well, I can go take somebody's spot. 
based on on the on on the roster. And I said it's very close to home. And I knew I would be able to not only um, play my game, but get that opportunity to really develop. Because I'm once again, I'm looking at the the roster, and I know what I'm trying to do. So I'm looking at the makeup of the team, um, and I'm thinking, can I eventually be that guy um, that could be that go-to player? Or am I on a team that's already super loaded in terms of my class? So that had a lot to do with, with my decision to go to see Paul. Just looking at that team, Gerald Green, um, Dow Walker, John Morton, Ramon Ramos, all those guys was going to be yeah. on their way out. And the field was going to be clear for me to come in and, and be that guy. So I was looking ahead. So so now let's let's go to the transition from your playing against each other in high school to now playing against each other in college. What changed? What was different? What do you remember? Well, I saw Murdoch his freshman year. And and to be on be able to go on that court his freshman year, that was something to behold. I didn't get to play my first my freshman year. I was prop 48. Right. Okay. I didn't play my first year. So Everything was new to me that year, and that's the same year we went to the um, to the Final Four. I would say for me, um, coming into that that season, watching it from afar, not really knowing what to expect because the experience wasn't there. I just know I don't like sitting, and I wanted to play, and I had expectations on my own self. And I never forget the first. The first, I would say, eight, nine, ten games, I was saying to myself, I'm transferring because I had never sat the bench. It was just, psychologically, it was just something I had to get over. Um, in our first Big East game, I didn't play. It was against St. John's, and i never forget. So I'm like, I got to get out of Seton Hall. This is not going to work for me. We had about a week off between games and I said and the only way you're gonna get on this court is you just gotta kill everybody in practice so for one week in practice I just destroyed everybody in my path <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious everybody in my path to the point where PJ started looking around like can anybody stop him but there was only one guy who I knew at that time could really stop me. It was Ramon Ramos. So it got to the point where he had to put Ramon on me. I said, good, that's what I want you to do. I want you to be able to see that I can hold my own against him. So the very next game, something happened and Ramon got hit in the eye and he had to miss about two, three games. And out of nowhere, PJ said prior to the next game, because he has to prepare and practice for what we're going to play. He said, hey, babe, you're going to start. So I literally went from no minutes on the bench to starting instantly. Wow. But for me, it's back to a mindset. Um, it was really a mindset. Not that, okay, this is my first year. Wait your turn. Sit down. Be patient. I was not going to be patient. I was going to do everything I can to go on that court. I wanted to be on the court. And I think when you when you think about the Big East and those players, that is the mindset they all had. I don't care what school it was. You don't go to Providence and get playing time as a freshman if you don't have that dog mentality. You're just not. Yeah. There's seniors in front of you. There's juniors in front of you, let alone a sophomore. You're going you're gonna to have to First of all, they're going to have to screw up big time, and I do mean big time, for you to even get a chance to sniff the court. So, you know, kudos to Murdoch, like I said, to start this off, um, to be able to get on that court. I mean, you really got to have a dog mentality. Yeah, yeah but um, just to piggyback on that, so the first time I go up this, I, I don't even graduate with my class. I went to summer school. Uh, before that, uh, to Providence to get a jump start. So I walk into the gym for the first time, 
Mind you, they're just coming off the final four. So Billy Donovan's in the gym, Delray Brooks, you know, Paco Screen, Del Dow Wright, all these. And like I walk into the gym and I swear I called my coach, my high school coach, Vaughn Stapleton, RIP, and told him there's no way I can handle this. These guys were so good. And that's when Patino instituted that individual instructions. I don't know if you guys know about it, but um, it's one hour in between classes with you and a coach. And you get in the gym and you go as hard as you can for an hour. Inside outs, between the legs, dribble moves, all this stuff, shooting. like, And you hated individual instructions. But looking back on my career, I think that's the one thing that got me into the NBA is yep. is individual instruction. But I swear, I called my coach and said, I'm coming home. I can't handle this. These guys yeah. are too good. And that's what opened my eyes. And then he cursed me out. He's like, you, you're not coming home. You better stay up there and you figure it out or whatever. And so, you know, thank God he uh, gave me that. Advice. But that was the start of my Big East, Big East career. I didn't think I could handle it. It was such a, a jump from high school to college ball, man. And your high school coach said you were one of the best players he's ever coached. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and he had some good ones. He was at Immaculata. Immaculata was a great, great high school uh, in New Jersey. Terry Bross was there. You guys remember Terry Bross? Yeah, sure. St. John's, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, But, yeah, I mean, you know, he loved coming out um, to the park, you know, where we grew up playing and just watching, just watching us play. He he knew he didn't have to tell us to go work. We were in the gym every day. We was in the park every day, every single day. So he would come out in his truck, cooler of Pepsi in the back. And uh, I tell you, to this day, it is the greatest Pepsi I've ever had. Because them days was hot, 98 degrees. We out there, hot pavement, running up and down. At the end, we'd go get a, co a Pepsi or a Coke. And, um, you know, he, he just was one of those guys that said that, you're not going to let basketball use you. You're going to use basketball. I knew nothing about college. I knew nothing about SATs, you know, having to qualify to get into college. He put me into a PSAT class. He put me in this. He prepared me. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for him coming into my life at that time, I definitely wouldn't have went as far as I've, I've gotten. Do you, do you guys remember the first time you met when you were both contributing minutes? Who's who's that? Do you remember well, when you guys met in college though? When you're now and so now Anthony, you're you're eligible and and you're playing Eric and you guys are now literally on the court. Go um ahead. to to think about it, I mean, we there was not a lot of communication on the court. It was just Stephen Hall was just another rivalry, whether it was Anthony Avent, whether it was my brother, like I wanted to destroy them there's not a lot of teams that i liked in the big east and and you guys know it you're passionate right now to this day i do not like nova i do not like yukon i do not like syracuse i do not like none of those teams because it was such a passion to beat them and with providence we was the always the the little engine that could you know what i'm saying we had to put a perfect game together to beat the mighty seton halls right the mighty yeah. georgetowns and syracuses so every victory got was well earned. And, um, you know, we put so much work into it. It was like uh, such a satisfaction to get a victory in the Big East. It wasn't easy. Remember, it was only, what, nine teams. Yeah. And every team, it was like a rivalry. So I didn't look at Avent, you know, we played AU ball or we put No, I was like, yo, I want to beat the hell out of them. So, Chuck, we're going to have to get Murdoch some therapy <laughs> because Murdoch just said to this very day, he hates all those teams. Right. <laughs> we got to get him some therapy because I love all those schools. <laughs> and it really came down to if you, if you played them and you were able to beat them, you have a different outlook now when you yes, say that. Yes. We and I think that's what it was. Because I couldn't stand Georgetown until we beat them in the, for the Big East title. Yeah. In the Garden. Um, the only school I still have a, a mixed feelings for is Syracuse. Because I never beat Syracuse in all my years. They were stacked. Yeah, they were Okay. Good. They were so stacked. it's one of those <laughs> things. Um, but I'll but, say this. I'll say this, Ant. Like, 
if 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 Syracuse back then, if Syracuse was playing North Carolina, say, okay, mm-hmm. we were rooting for Syracuse, even yeah. though we couldn't stand. If Georgetown was playing Indiana, oh yeah, we were rooting for Georgetown. Okay. It's not like that at other places. I mean, and that's the kind of the brotherhood kind of of the Big East Conference. It's there's a bond. The only thing different about where you guys played and where Sonny and I played really was the color of the shirt you were wearing. You went all through everybody who's come and talked to us on the show, like you guys have a very similar story. Once you get involved with the inner workings of the Providence Friars or the Seton Hall Pirates or the Syracuse Orangemen, it's very similar. uh, Once you get behind the curtain, you know, and, and we went out and, and battled and beat the hell out of each other. You know, mm-hmm. and then, you know, then root for each other if they play somebody else, because it was it was kind of like family at that point. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you agree yeah. with that? So we, we were still new in terms of a conference. And I yeah. think when you, when you when you think about the ACC, you were it was always either North Carolina, North Carolina State. It was Duke. But mm-hmm. the way the Big East was promoted, it was really promoted as the Big East. They did a great job putting the Big East in front of all the individual schools. So whether it was ESPN um, showing the Big East, they re- it was sort of like the NFL. The NFL highlights the shield, the NFL, the NFL, the NFL, more so the individual players. The NBA right. will highlight individual players. Yep, yep, yep. The Big East did a great job of promoting the Big East. Yep. And so, the coaches, I think. I think the coaches were a big yeah, face of yeah. them. And I don't yeah. know if I don't I can't speak for other conferences, but before the tour- before the Big East tournament would start, they will always have a dinner where all the teams would come together in one place before the tournament. So yeah. you had that, I think for us, um, and, and going back to what you said earlier, Murdoch, mm-hmm. you didn't know what team in the Big East you wanted to play for. You just knew you wanted to play in the Big East. Correct. Right. That, that's, that was my take. Correct. Correct. I just knew I wanted to play in the Big East. No doubt. So to answer your question, Chuck, that's why that, that family bond is the way it is. Yeah. We were big. Yeah, and, 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 and to piggyback off of that, it's like now when you see a former Big East player, oh, it's no doubt. all love. Like, oh, I no. saw Chris Smith the you know last year and – you know, we embraced, exchanged numbers. And it's like that with, with – and me and Chris used to go at it. Like, that's one yeah. of the dudes. Oh, well, I, I believe that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was just me against him. And we were guarding each other. It wasn't you guard this guy. We were guarding and we would go at each other. And it was just all love and all respect. Uh, back then, yeah, there was a hatred that was a rival. But right now, you you see somebody in the Big East, it's, 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 it's all love because we all know um, – what we've been through, the hard work that we put in, uh, but also at the same time, the Big East was is special, and it's it, you know it's special. It's special. The old Big East special. was special. Yeah. Um, I don't think it will be ever duplicated again as a conference. No. It's once in a lifetime kind of thing to happen. And, and it was just everybody looked towards playing in the Big East. You had guys Stephen Thompson from California coming to the Big East. Yep, Stevie. You know, all those guys, man. So uh, it's always going to be a fond memory of the, this playing in the Big East. Playing, you know, it, it was a dream. And, you know, Providence wasn't a great team in there, but we got to compete against the big dogs of the Big East. And that was. Yeah, but you got to, you got to a Final Four in 87, and that's seven years into the conference. Yeah. Georgetown's yeah. playing for a national that. championship. You look, you look at that for a second, Sonny, Dude. right? You know, the conference is six years old at, at, at that point, and we had two national champions, and we've had, what, six teams in the Final Four? Well, and Syracuse teams. was runner-up in 87, but that was the year Providence was in it. Syracuse and all, Providence. 89, they're in the championship. Yeah. yeah. Villanova, St. John's, Georgetown, and Seton Hall. You know, there you go. I mean, so now that we're well, mentioning Final Fours, Ant, talk about that run in 89. To get so, to get to that final game. Wow. I tell everybody all the time, it was like a blur. I don't think we had the time off the way they do today. Because once we left our campus um, to play our first game, 
we never stepped foot back on Seton Hall University campus until after the Michigan game. Yeah, but you um, were in the West Coast. I mean, that was the reason for that. He didn't want to fly you back and forth across the country. Well, they do it today. Well, they also charter today, too. Yeah. yeah. But just, just the, the – and when you look at the length of time that we were gone, um, it was like, okay, you're playing Indiana. So we already know who Indiana is in the lore of basketball. So when you're at Seton Hall for the first time and you reach that level of the tournament and you have to face Indiana, okay, psychologically, it's, it's not so much are we better players than their players. It's more so are we good enough to be Indiana. Yeah. Because you think about the name Indiana. Bob Knight. Mm -hmm. So we get through them. Okay, we beat Indiana. Now we have to play UNLV. So once again, it's not like we had this history and we've been there. We're like, okay, can we beat UNLV? Not can we beat those players? Can you beat the mystique, that name, that brand? Park. Tartani over there with a towel in his mouth. Can you beat them? And part of your psychology is saying, nah, we can't beat them. We're not supposed to beat them. We're just supposed to go out here and be as competitive as we can. And if we don't beat them, it's okay because no one expects us to beat them. Right, right. right. So, but we beat them. I get to the, I get to our psychology in a minute. Now we're playing Duke. Okay. I don't need to repeat everything I just said. <laughs> right. And Danny Ferry is player of the year. But now at this point, what we realized was we just finished playing in the Big East. This is where all of this, so so Dow Walker, Gerald Green, John Morton, Ramon Ramos, they had already been through these wars. So they're not awestruck. They already place, played some of the best players in the country for four, for going on four years now. Don't forget my man Pookie, Avent. Don't forget well, Pookie. This was, this was Pookie's second year. <laughs> this was my first season. So I'm really talking about those vets who've been four years at Seton Hall uh-huh. going through those wars. They were awestruck. So when we saw how John was coming out and how Jura was barking, and how Dow was moving, and Ramon, it just told the rest of us, you know what? Maybe we are supposed to be here. And we just came in and rolled their back and their leadership. And that's that's the same thing that happened when we stepped on the court against Duke. It was those guys who were those vets that led the charge. And we just came in and fed off their energy, like, yeah, we do belong, we do belong. And... um. Well, those guys were were there when there were was slim pickings for victories in the Big oh, East, question. to the point where now they're on the top of the conference, which yeah, similar to Billy Donovan's oh. you know story too, and 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 yeah. and how they started and where they mm-hmm. became, it's it's really it was a testament to what happens in the Big East. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct, and we picked up Andrew Gaze that one year. Yep, who came over with more of a professional background in terms of experience. So he wasn't so much in awe. Um, it, it was really that 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 group that been through those wars. And prior to that year, they made their first tournament run ever um, right. with Mark Bryant. Right. So it was the perfect storm. It was the perfect setup for us um, to to um, make that kind of a run. And I'm not saying teams underestimated us because once you get down to the Sweet 16, nobody's underestimating anyone. I think it was more so us having being battle tested, yeah. having to go against the Syracuse, the Novas, the Georgetowns, the Providence, the same. The physicality Charles. of the league oh. played into that too, don't you think, Ant? I mean, they got out of hand. They said, "We're gonna give you guys six fouls." <laughs> yes. I don't know if you was there, Chuck, when they changed yeah, the rules. Was, was yes. Right after that, fouls. Because uh, I probably could have like used seven rules. myself. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Chuck. Yeah, the physicality. And I think 
I think it hurt us in the NCAA, the six fouls, because it went back to five once you got to the tournament. And well, every every team in the big is fouling out. Foul trouble, yeah. <laughs> but I would I will say this. It goes back to a East Coast style of play and mindset, also. If if you're on the East Coast and you think about the coaches from from DC Georgetown all the way up to Providence. Everything started with tough-minded defense. Mm -hmm. Everything was built off of defense. Mm -hmm. So if you think about most schools um, outside of the Big East, the emphasis wasn't as much on defense. Mm -hmm. Just shut them down. Mm -hmm. Hardcore edgy is below zero outside. Put on your boots. Walk everywhere in the freezing cold. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a it's, it's a mindset. You just become so hardened mm-hmm. when you live in these conditions, and then you got these East Coast coaches who are also hard, and they're the ones pushing you. It, you get on that court, and it comes down to just you going harder than the next man and willing to go through the wall. You was going to get that from Big East um, schools. And a lot of these kids, they come from that environment. So I think that that mindset, that mentality, all of that just translate onto the court when you're down by 15 or 20. And you just say, you know what? We just got to start fighting. Now, not to that fight mindset. I, I, I've seen it lately. And if I was in your shoes and I watched that final bit, between you and Michigan, and today with replay, you you don't lose it. You don't get that game ripped out of your hands. Is yeah. my 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 point? They, they got screwed, man. Absolutely, they got screwed. And it's not talked about enough. And I saw it the other oh, day, God. and I'm like, holy, because I right? did the thing on Ramil Robinson, and they yes, yes. and uh, I I said, how the yeah. hell? Because he was just looking to. They basically just passed the ball. Right. Correct. Wasn't trying Correct. to make a move to the bat and you get caught Correct. out in that situation. Like, yeah, seen Hall, you guys got screwed, bro. Hey, Amen. Yeah, I know. Got screwed, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I just I saw it myself too. And I was like, this it just doesn't you just don't hear enough about it. Yeah. Like and I give credit to PJ. It was the way PJ handled it at the end. He didn't complain. He didn't put up a fuss. He just, you know, congratulated Michigan and moved on. Um, he was a class act when it came yeah. to that. But also, I just think if, if we were in the era of social media, my gosh. It would be been nuts. A reaction. Yeah. It's um, gone also, viral, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would have been a different, a totally different reaction. Um, yeah, it was. Michigan may have one of those asterisk marks by the name when it came to championship <laughs> titles. Seriously, right? Yeah, because yeah. the public, the public would have made it known. They would have made their feelings felt. That was one of the greatest games I watched, man. I mean, yeah. it was back and forth, nip and tuck. Glenn Rice is doing his thing on that side. You guys doing your thing over there, and for the end, and with a call like that, it was just That's shameful. Hard. That's, yeah, I read something. It was still is rated as one of the top ten highest um, viewed games in NCAA history. Oh, it was a phenomenal game. Yeah, yeah, much, uh, I viewed that. Um, but you know, just going back to the Big East, man. If you didn't know what the Big East were, you knew what it was when the Big East tournament came around, because it the way they set it off, it had that unique advantage over all conferences was that it was being held at Madison Square Garden. And that's ESPN picking up again. Yep. That, that same we, vibe. Yes, yes, yes. So the whole world, first of all, you, you set the guard. All these games is at the guard. ESPN is covering it. And now teams that you didn't get to see go edit during a regular season where as a casual fan, it may not have that much meaning. Now it's, and, and at that time, and even to this day, even when I was in the Big East, I thought nothing about winning the Big East regular season. To me, it almost meant nothing. It was all about, can you win the tournament? Yeah. Can you win the tournament? Yep. Yeah. Can, can you, you win play the on tournament? Sunday? Yeah. Just remember yeah. remember when like you, you just drove up to the garden and 
your band is outside of the garden playing and the other team's band is outside and they're talking, they're going back and forth. And it was just a vibe, man. The Big East tournament probably was the greatest spectacle I've ever been a part of. I mean, just the c- coming in and the excitement, you just fed off of that. You wanted so desperately to win games in the Big East tournament because you didn't want to go home. Right. right. You just right. didn't want to go home. And uh I remember uh my freshman year, the tough year with Gordy, you know, we get our we get our asses kicked, right? And so we had a terrible season. We lose first round of biggies, probably the play in tournament or something. And so my high school team has a state championship game again versus Shabazz the next year. Wow. This was at St. Peter's, and so they're playing that night. Mm. So I'm going to that game and Gordy came to me and was like, you're getting on this bus and you're going back to Providence. Really? I was like, okay. <laughs> so what do you think I did, Avent? So I mean, you went back to Providence. and tried I didn't to go back to, to Providence. I went to that freaking no, game. You went to the game. I'm and absolutely. guess who's in the stands? Oh. Gordy's recruiting. Somebody. Gordy's there, yeah. Of course he is. So I wow. get there, my fans give me a standing ovation. <laughs> Gordy, and Gordy's off. giving me the craziest look I've ever seen in my life because my mentality was, Gordy, if you come back, I'm not coming back. So, okay, okay. yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So, I was like, I, I didn't really care what he said, but I, there's no way I was going to miss that rematch of the state championship game. And, and, again, this was of course, game. and then, of course, uh, Bridgewater beat Shabazz that second year. Amen. So, <laughs> And and and, and yeah, you just had to say get that no, one no, in. So, so yeah, I got it, it, Eric. Don't worry, he <laughs> didn't catch it. I caught it. No, I, oh, I, caught, <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. And I noticed Anthony's disappearing from the screen. Anthony disappeared. <laughs> we're looking at no, no, we're looking no, no, at no. Anthony the model. <laughs> Anthony's <laughs> disappearing from the <laughs> screen. I noticed that. <laughs> that picture, no, no, no. That picture oh, listen, in the background I, has a frown on it. Right I'm not done. I'm not done. So 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 let's put it in perspective. They won. Avon, I'm just spitting facts, man. We won the game. That's all I said. We won the game. They, they won again. Um, probably had better guard play because now I think Dave and Lance were seniors now. Both had yeah, your guards more. were good, man. Don't don't. Their guards I'm not saying. Good. Let, let me, let Al me, Ray me. and Reggie Collins was a Al Ray player. and Reggie Collins did not go to the Big East or the ACC or the Big Ten. <laughs> so no. let's let's keep it in perspective. But there's a lot of players that did. Good. There's still levels to this. You had two guards that went to Villanova. Off that team, that's the difference. Okay. But in well, all due respect, what what do Providence do? They go and grab Eric Williams. Who does what? Help Providence. Did Eric Williams win the Big East title? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you guys beat Shabazz, but you went to Shabazz Providence, aka Providence, <laughs> and you grab one of the greatest players out of Shabazz history, who's one of the greatest players in Providence history, yes, sir. Eric Williams. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So as you talk about how you guys beat us, respectfully, <laughs> just talk about Eric Williams. <laughs> so Providence, we beat you winner. and we took your players. And made you guys a winner. Wow. <laughs> well, listen, let me, let me, let me say this. I, I love the, the chop breaking, the ball busting and stuff like that amongst friends. And you could tell how good of friends you guys are. So talk about playing on the Milwaukee Bucks together as friends and st- both starting, you know, talk about that experience, what that was like in the league, Eric, when you're, when you're with your buddy, Anthony. It was incredible to be honest with you. Um, like, like you said, the history that we've had, uh, I only want nothing but success for Anthony Avent. So uh, we had a young team. Mike Dunleavy was the new coach. Yep. And GM. Um, I remember that. Yeah, let, let, let me go back. I was drafted by the Utah Jazz. So I played behind John Stockton, right? There was only seven minutes available a game behind John Stockton, right? So those seven minutes I played, I didn't play that great. So they traded me to Milwaukee the next year. So 1992, I'm in Milwaukee. And uh, you still, you guys are still with me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm with with Milwaukee, and then Avent I think gets traded over there to to uh, Milwaukee, and so we got a young team, and so my biggest strength on the court was getting into the lane, my little floaters and finishing, and running the pick and roll, 
And Avent was the great screener, first of all. And he was a good roller or pick and pop. So we had instant um, chemistry on the floor. And like I said, man, Avent, uh, as a big man, there's nothing like a smart big man. You know what I'm saying? That knows the game. Uh, that sees the game like a guard. And Avent sees the floor like a guard. So we had great chemistry. So anytime we ran pick and roll, if I didn't have it, I'm dishing to Avent for a layup or a little jumper. Uh, defensively, we're, we're talking on defense. We're communicating. Uh, you know, because back in the day, it was a lot of pick and rolls. Still a lot of pick and rolls. But, you know, you had to know how to cover people. You know, yeah. if it was a guy that you had to go under, you went under the screen. If it's a guy you had to trap, you had to trap him. If it's a guy that you had to hedge, Avon was right there hedging, making sure that guard did not turn that corner and get into that lane. So a very, very good player. I mean, I think uh, we lived in the same building. So he would come. That's where he stole my tape. But he would come over. <laughs> we would watch TV. We would watch this and that. And go to practice, and after practice, we go eat, we get hang out, we went to the clubs, and so uh, the chemistry was there. Avent, uh, we got so much history. I love this dude, and wanted nothing but success for him. So, so ditto, same thing for Murdoch, but it made the transition easy when yes. you go into a new city for the first time. And in in me, in my case, I'm coming there all by myself. Right. And you try, and it's not college, you know, where you're in the dormitories, you get to know everybody. You're all similar age. So in this situation, just knowing Murdoch was there, you know you had a road dog now. So it made that whole transition easy. Whatever you was going through, he was going through. But we get there, it's our first year, and I don't know how we both ended up starting. <laughs> in our first season. So that was miraculous within itself. Yeah, no doubt. Taking another step, um, I believe me and Murdoch once again were rewarded for being in the Big East because we walked into the NBA understanding how to play defense. Defense. You have to know how to play defense when you get to the NBA. And we were able to translate that Big East mindset and what we're taught in the Big East when it comes to defense, we was able to translate that right into the NBA. And that's why we got on that court. Period. Yeah. Understood defense. Understood hedging. Understood how to communicate. Understood how to rotate. And the coach didn't have to go through this long, drawn-out learning curve because you can't play defense, you can't get on the court in the NBA. You're gonna get tortured. Yeah. And and it's it, it starts with the defense. And um just thinking back, just having this conversation, it's like, wow, yeah, we we finally went from AAU, Dylan College, to actually being on the same team and starting our first year in Milwaukee. So that was an experience. We got to experience so much together based on the high yeah. kings of the world, the Jordans of the world. So that was just that 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 was like wow. That was yeah, good. That, that had to be. I mean, yeah, you know, so like you say, from when you're a little kid to now you're a grown man and you're in, in the, the, the highest level that you can play at, and all did it all together. Yeah, man. All at the same time. That and was that wasn't the only team. I mean, we played with each other in Vancouver. Well, you went the Clippers too, right? Together? Clippers, Vancouver. Clippers and Vancouver. Yeah. So but that first time in Milwaukee, that was, I mean, because everything is just so new. Yeah. So when Murdoch made the Three point shooting contest for All Star Weekend. Yeah, I was one of his. Um, <laughs> me and this other little guy who played in a Richard Pryor movie, uh, Toy Story. Scotty Schwartz. Scotty Schwartz. We was Murdoch's. We were Murdoch's ball boys who were <laughs> pulling the ball. It's not like it is today. So I said, Murdoch, you going to are you in the shooting contest? I said, Okay, well, I guess I'm going to All Star Weekend to support you. And we find a little gem, and we make sure Murdoch's getting up his shots. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually on YouTube. Um, I'm going against, uh, I think, Dana Barrels, and uh, we actually tied, so we had a little playoff. And Avon is right there, you know. Did you go twice? My, huh? Did you go twice? Yeah, I had to go twice because yeah, we had tied. Twice. Yeah. 
I went each, I went each time with Murdoch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's funny so, now I think about it. <laughs> so I got just a couple more things I want to ask you guys. I want to yeah. I want to ask you guys both about current day uh, situations at your particular schools, right? Mm -hmm. Providence, Cooley leaves, and you got Kim English who comes yeah. in. Um as my guy, I, my guy. He's I think doing he's doing a job. fantastic job myself. Yeah, you know? really great job. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what? give me your opinion of what's going on current day with the Friars and, and Coach English. Uh, it's funny that, um, you know, looking back on this season, our best player goes down, right. Bryce Hopkins, against Seton Hall. And uh, we end up losing that game. Uh, it was a good game. Um, fast forward, we play Seton Hall again. Seton Hall doesn't have their best player. And we win that game. Um, but the job that Kim English is doing is uh, it's amazing, especially after the injury. Um, you know, we we won some, some serious games. And the games, a lot of games we lost, I think St. John's, well, we lost the Garden, UConn. Uh, and I was at both of these games at UConn. And there was another game that we lost where we missed 15 free throws in the second half, something ridiculous like that. You yep. know, if it wasn't for the missed free throws, we win those games. So uh, we would be definitely in the NCAA tournament, um, you know, right now. But right now we're still fighting. Uh, we're winning games. Um, and they're just playing a style that, you know, wins games and that's locking down defensively. Yep. Uh, we got a big kid inside Odor who's playing some big time basketball. Um, Devin Carter is playing unbelievable. He's killing uh, it. He's yep. one of those guys that hits some big shots. I mean, when I played, it was called EMT, Eric Murdoch time in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Now it's Devin Carter time. You know what I mean? He, he gets the ball and he's going to make a timely three. Uh, that breaks your back. But um, it's exciting to see what Kim English is doing at 35 years old. This guy's 35 years old. And um, he, he's mature way beyond his his age. And uh, yeah. I just love supporting the program. I didn't get up the uh, chance to see uh, the Ed Cooley game coming back, but I heard it was absolutely it was bananas. <laughs> I heard it was a oh, zoo. Yeah. I mean, so uh, glad yeah, nothing do. happened, you know, but... um. Yeah, you know we're we're, we're playing well, and uh, I'm lo I'm looking for it. I'll probably go catch another two or three games before the season's over. But you could see how Kim treats his players. It's 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 different, for sure, different. for sure. And that's what happens when you when you're a player. Uh, right. You know, he's been all over. He's been overseas. Um, you know, he had a little stint in the NBA. Um, you know, didn't last long, but very knowledgeable. Uh, he coached under Rick Barnes. He was head coach at George Mason and. He yep. was the hot coach. And yep. uh, thank God that. Um, great choice, right? Stevie Knapp, that was his first hire. That's and great he, he knocked it out the box, man. He got a, he got a great one. He's going to be good for a long time. I think how about your Scott Pirates? Man? Same characteristics, too, but we'll get to that. But, Anthony, go ahead. How, how about your Pirates? I mean, you know, they were picked like third from the bottom to start the season, right? And Shaheen is pulling off his magic again. And uh, these guys are playing phenomenal all year long. Yeah, who would have thought that, right? Um, coming into this season. But yeah. Shaheem show once again, well, Shaheem is a, is a Seton Hall Big East point guard who. Wait, wait, stop. Say that one more time. He's what? What position? He's a, he's a Seton <laughs> Hall Big East point guard. Point guard. Okay. All right. Just, just. Who, who so built, he's not a big. All right. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> he built the team off of defense. So he understands uh, to have success in the Big East. You have to play some solid defense. Let your defense create opportunities for you on the offensive end. So he yep. gave that team his identity. Yep. Tough-minded, Tough. um, strong will, defensive-minded team. And he showed you when you watch St. Peter's during that run, Yep, the way they played defense was just phenomenal. How everyone was on the same page. How about so that Purdue game? Yeah, that's what you see with Seton Hall right now. You see a defense that's on the string. And they create the opportunities. And they, even if they're not on or if they're not hot, they rely on that defense to keep you cold until yeah. they get hot and could go on the street. 
So Seton Hall with Shaheem Holloway, um, they they made a great choice when they um, brought him to replace the um, former coach that's now at Maryland. So you got yeah, Willard, Kevin Willard, Seton, yeah. Shaheem to do what he's doing, mm-hmm. not knowing what he really was going to have in terms of a. I don't want to say not. Nah, he knew what his team was going to be, but to know what his team would be that good mm-hmm. to be able to fight every night the way they are. Um, I don't. I don't think the writers. I don't even know if the players expected that, but yeah, so I hope I they continue it. to ride, man. Well, it's, it's a di- it's a different world now. With you talk about the NIL money and there's the haves and the have-nots, and and that 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 chasm has just gotten bigger. That's so, that, that's that's a whole another conversation. Right? Yeah, on where he, we are he's getting it done. where we're going. Um, so he's gotten it done in the face of all this right now. Right. The challenge, obviously, was for a school like Seton Hall is going to be how do we keep it going with the whole NIL um, play now? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're still going to have to have talent. Yeah. Um, all these great coaches from Cooley to the Providence coach, et cetera, at the end of the day, you're going to have to have talent because you start to understand, okay, we can have a solid Big East season, but then can we translate over to the NCAA tournament? Because that's what happened with Willard. He was having really solid Big East seasons, even when in Big East tournaments. But now we get to the NCAA tournament, we can't get out the first round. So after so many Big East successful seasons, it's no longer about the Big East no more. It's okay, can we win in a tournament? So I think for Seton Hall and Shaheen, is gonna, that's going to be the next step. Can we finally do some advancing in the NCAA tournament? So... We're up. We're up against it. I got one more question for each of you guys. We're gonna, and then we'll wrap this up, okay? And, and I'm gonna start with you. Uh, what advice would you give to a youngster about getting his degree? Because I think you talked about being Prop 48, and then you went back, and I know you went back and you got your degree. And I think that's an awesome story. So, what would you tell a youngster that's that's looking to play at at the same type of levels that you guys played at? but also how important it is to get that piece of paper at the end of the day. I would tell a youngster, you have to find a balance. You're only going to be young for so long. You only can do this for so long. Right. So if you have the talent and you have that passion and the talent, you have to truly exhaust as much energy as possible to try to realize that dream or plan on the next level. While doing that, you have to understand that you do want to be as highly educated as possible. So while going through this journey, don't take school for, don't don't just, just not pay attention. You wanna be successful while you're in school. You wanna pass your classes. You wanna shorten that time between whatever happens on the athletic field versus getting your degree. I say that because I didn't realize when I left Seton Hall in 91, I had no idea when I left, this is no lie. I had no idea I was three classes short of my degree. I didn't even know it until I decided to go back to get my degree. They said, well, you only got to take three classes. I'm like, well, God, Excuse my language. Damn, I could have did that online a long time ago. But what I'm saying is, while I was there, I didn't take it. I didn't take it for granted. I did what I had to do when it came to um, taking school um, for what it was worth, which was I'm here. Let me get educated. I would say to a kid today, if you got that talent, get that working, that focus in. Um, but at the end of the day, you can always get that degree. You can't always go back and and work on your craft and give yourself a chance to um, play in the NBA. But you just have to be realistic when it comes to you and your game and know if you're one of those guys 
who can play on that next level or not. And the dynamics are changing today when it comes to um, where your attention and focus should be when it comes to a career outside of basketball, because we're in a different paradigm shift when it comes to those particular jobs you would need um, to be successful today. And some of them may be in the space of a trade in the technology field. It may yeah. not be in the traditional um, fields that, that were available when we came up because we're shifting. Yeah. All right, Eric, tell me about your group and what you're doing to help rebuild some of the courts and some of the things. You and I spoke offline. Yeah. Tell, tell, me, tell me a little bit about that. And also, tell me about this big event that you guys are doing for the Big East tournament. We got a lot of guys that have been asking us to, to do something like this. I think it's really great uh, what you guys are going to do. And um, we've got people that listen to the show that want to come by. And we got yeah. former players that want to come by. So talk about those two things and we'll wrap this up. All right. So um, this past September, I relaunched my foundation, the Eric Murdoch Foundation. And uh, I had a, an event at my house. Uh, it was a school supply give back. Uh, I invited a bunch of my friends. Uh, Avent was there. Uh, a couple boxes were there. And um, the people who came donated uh, backpacks, school supplies. Uh, I think we had about 60 backpacks and full, and we had to fill them all up. And uh, growing up, I was a part of the Martin Luther King Youth Center. Uh, it was a youth center that I went to uh, after school and uh, we would eat, we would do our homework, we'd play games, we'd go on trips and uh, the youth center still uh, is is here and it's probably a hundred yards uh, from where I live. So the next day we took all of those book backpacks filled with supplies and we took them down to the youth center. Um, and, you know, I just got to a point where I'm 55 years old, which I can't believe. Um, and I lived a dream. Uh, I played at the highest level in college. Uh, I played the highest level in the NBA and um, in the world in in the world. And uh, it's just time that, you know, it's time to give back. It's time to give back. It's time to give a, a, a kid a chance uh, similar to what I had. I had people come into my life who guided me, who helped me uh, to reach that level. And, um, you know, I look at some of those kids down at the youth center. I said, you know, I could, I could be that mentor. I could be that person that, you know, gives them, you know, some hope, uh, give them some clarity on where they want to go, uh, you know, in their life. And so uh, that's where I'm at in my life right now. It's just uh, what can I do to help somebody else? Uh, you know, as an athlete, it's kind of all about you and your goals and where you're trying to get to and uh, have I reached my goal and, you know, when you when you when you've done that, it's a great individual achievement. Uh, obviously, you got teammates, but uh, to be in somebody's life and be an inspiration, um, you know, that's where that's where I'm at. So the Eric Murdoch Foundation is uh, right now our, our major project right now is to uh, rehab uh, the basketball courts that I grew up in. Uh, right now, there's grass growing through the the court. There's uh, cracks. Uh, the rims are bent. Um, the, the, the goal posts are old and historic. And so actually I'm working with the town of Bridgewater who just filed for a grant, a hundred thousand dollars. That's going to go specifically to these courts. Uh, the goal is about, I would say 150,000. And so with this grant, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be too far from, uh, you know, reaching that goal. Um, uh, you know, with the, the biggies, um, this is, I, I know you probably can't see it, but, um. It's called Beer Beats and the Big East Tournament, hosted by Eric Murdoch. It's going to be at. Oh my God. I got a dog, guys. Sorry. Don't let her down there. It's at the Land Shark Barn Grill in Times Square. Um, it's a Thursday, March 14th, 6 30 to 10 o'clock. Sorry about that, guys. But um, it's, it's just something that I, you know, Myself and Avon has been talking about for years and bringing Big East guys back just to hang out, just to talk, see what guys are doing in their lives, seeing how we can help each other. Uh, me and Avon got some things, you know, going beyond that. Uh, but this is just the start to just try to reunite during the Big East tournament time. Yep. 
where guys are in town. Let's all get together. Uh, I would like for you guys to do your podcast, you know, at this event and just interview guys and see what they're doing and kind of, you know, reunion. Because just think about the Big East tournament. We have nothing for former players and even some of the legendary coaches. Um, you know, they haven't been recognized, you know, the way they have they should be. Big East players haven't been recognized the way they should be. So um, like I said, we have some things on the horizon that we want you guys to be a part of. Uh, it starts with this year's Big East tournament. Let's try to get as many people, former players here as possible and um, come together with some like-minded ideas and see how we could, you know, recognize some of our our, our people. Well, I, I think it's great. And we would love to do that and be a part of it. You know, uh, we've been trying to do stuff like that for a couple of years ourselves and through our social media platforms and stuff, people are always asking us to do meetups and stuff like that. And perfect time. This year is a big year in the, uh, in the Big East tournament. It's going to be a great tournament. So it'll be a perfect time. Uh, we got to get that on the website, Chuck. We got to get yep, that. Absolutely. Where are you guys located? Where are you guys out? Where are you guys are? Where are you guys? Sonny's up in Binghamton and I'm on Long Island. Okay, so you're relatively close. So yeah, we're right. Yeah, we're close yeah. enough. You know. Hey, hey Chuck, oh. I got a, I got a son that's gotten a full offer ride from some Villanova. Oh, really? Well, we'll yeah. have to talk offline then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. That's you guys name. stick yeah. around. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. You guys stick around for a few minutes, and we'll talk for a couple minutes. But before I do, Eric, is it true? Okay. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. Hobbstown. That down the street was way better than up the street. That's what I think. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I gotta hear it from your lips. So Listen, man, we, we were in those parks every day playing down the street versus up the street. Now, down the street only had two players, really. I've never heard that of that. That was Dave like, and Lance. Down the street versus up the street. Now, up the street, it wow. was my, it was myself, my cousin, who, uh, Jason Murdoch, who went to Providence College. Uh, I had some other cousins who went Division Two basketball. It was, it was. I'm not gonna say it wasn't close. It was some battles, but we okay. definitely we had the edge over. Uh, you know, you know, you know exactly, you know exactly who I got this from. Yeah, yeah, tell Lance Dave and Lance Dave Miller. Miller. Yeah. yeah, Lance yeah. and Dave Miller, two of my uh, Villanova buddies. So. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard of up the street versus down. Well, I, I guess that was a family thing that they yeah. had. Uh, absolutely. You know, so absolutely, they lived on the same street. Hey, we're professional journalists. We do some research. We do our due yeah, diligence. Man, you got, here, guys. Hey, you I don't want you to think we just flip the lights on and it's a show. You know, no, so, man, you guys so doing you, you guys are doing a great <laughs> job, man. I look forward to your to your shows and um, let's keep this thing alive and going, man. Yep, thanks yeah. a lot. Hang out for a couple minutes. Let me wrap this up. So yeah, you've okay. been listening to the Big East Rewind with Chuck Everson and Sonny Spera. The Big East Rewind is produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus and Daryl Gurney. Check us out on all things social media by putting Big East Rewind in the search bar. And check out our new website, www.bigeastrewind.com, where you get all your up-to-date information on what we're doing with the program and, and other events, such as the ones that the guys were talking about just now. And we'd like you to go on there and subscribe, and you'll get, have, you'll get cut off on everything. Well, it was great seeing everybody. Good to talk to you guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. Great we appreciate up. you very much. Thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. Have a good night, everybody. Appreciate you guys. Right. Peace. Thank you. Peace.